Okay, here we are, part D. Hopefully this will be shorter. In the last video I talked all about the, the fact that, yeah, collapse, there's a good chance it's coming. Like I said, I still, the jury's still out for me because I'm a contrarian, and when all these doom and gloomers line up and say, oh, things are going to fall apart and so forth, somehow the bankers pull it out. Seems like they pull it out every single time. Uh, and the reason why they're pulling it out is because the market's rigged. They print all the money. They dump the money into the market, and that's why the market's rising. Okay. But let's say these doom and gloomers are correct and we are accelerating towards uh, collapse. And I believe that we are. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying those guys are wrong. It's inevitable. What comes is inevitable. The timing is what's uncertain. Is it going to happen this year? I don't know. It could. It definitely could. The bond market could collapse. When these things happen, we found in, in the... If you look at history, it's never gradual. I mean, it's like, you know... 20 years to become an overnight success. It's like, okay, so all this stuff happens and all at the end, you get that, you get that power curve and then things blow up. Bond market could blow up very quickly. Europe, same thing, uh, could blow up very quickly. Uh, all these people wanting their gold back. Ooh, this tells me loss of, loss of confidence is definitely starting to permeate the market. Now, when you have loss of confidence, that's where things fall apart. So this is why they lie to you on TV. Right? There's, a, there's a great st uh, study about leaders and leaders will fib a little and they will bend the truth a little in order to get the, the, their people, their followers to do what they want, uh, which is a good thing at, at some points, you know, like Alexander telling them, we, we've got this, right? <laughs> when the odds are overwhelming and so on, and somehow they pull it out, right? Okay, well, this is what the bankers are trying to say. Oh, if we just instill the people with confidence, make sure, well, consumer confidence is kind of faltering because people are kind of looking around and saying, wait a minute, they're not looking so good. Um... So maybe you better prepare for what comes, because if these guys are right, and I think they are, guys like, see, here's the thing, Alex Jones, right, he, right, he hasn't been accurate that much, but Gerald Salenti has been pretty damn accurate over time, quite a bit of the time, trends forecasting, and he's been able to tell you, and just like I'll tell you, everybody else will tell you that when these things fall apart, bad things happen, and the United States just doesn't have a really excellent, you know, reputation or track record of solving things peacefully. We tend to go, instead of pen mightier than sword, guys, pen mightier than sword. What tends to happen, people tend to uh, turn to their guns. And people tend to go the violent route in the United States. Always, we, right? So, we always, okay, so understanding nullification and jury nullification. Understanding liberty and freedom. Don't shirk your jury duty, right? Get, your, get on the jury. Um, the whole concept of nullification is that if they make these bad laws and the bad laws are in the books, well, you don't, you don't, you don't convict. The guy can be guilty of sin. Yes, he did have a pound of pot in his trunk, and he did have, you know, a bag of joints in his pocket. So what? Right? Maybe he was selling. Maybe, maybe actually he was just using it for himself. Maybe he was take right. And these people that you know for a fact that they've got that pound because they're making Phoenix Tears, because they're making hemp oil, because they've got cancer, you're going to put these guys in jail? You're going to put these guys at a dollar a day in the prison industrial complex, right? Jim Crow? Really? And, you, and you'll find that it's minorities, right? The, 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 a lot of the wealthy white people, they're not too worried about it. They'll just get a lawyer to get them off. But the, the poor people, they get in jail and then they're stuck there. And then once they get in the system, they, they're, it, they're screwed for the rest of their lives because they never get out of it. We don't re rehabilitate at all. Okay, we've got too much of that going on. We've got too much of the disparity between the very wealthy, right, that 1% that owns more than the 90% of, of us combined. The 1%, that's how concentrated the wealth is. And that our founding fathers told us about these corporations. And this guy talking about corporations, again, it's these wealthy corporations. I'm not talking about, you know, mom and pop that decide to incorporate for tax advantages, right? I'm not talking about little co companies that are, you know, that are in the free market trying to do business making tables and chairs or furniture or, you know, for, or milk and dairy pro or farms and so forth that have incorporated. I'm talking about the big centralized banks, these big corporations and these huge financial institutions that pour money into these various, uh, into the prison industrial complex, the military industrial complex, and the, and the security industrial complex, lobby the government to pass laws, to put you in jail, or to enslave you with debt. This is, the, these are the guys, and then our government doesn't control these. The government does not uh, rein these guys in, because history has shown consistently that these wealthy people will always do this. They'll try to make monopolies, they'll try to, you know, make the laws for their benefits. They make laws that say poor people can't sleep under bridges. Really, Rockefellers aren't too concerned about that law, right? Um, you get it? That's a, anyway. Okay, so the, the point being is that when the collapse comes, and I've talked now for five minutes again, this is basically just synopsis of the, uh, the other video, when the collapse comes, 
bad things happen. Their, their governments always, this is just history, they proffer up, they make crisis, and then they, they get more control and more control. And as Princess Leia says, the tighter they close their fists, the more it slips through their fingers. And finally, what happens is not the idea of sound money catches on, not the idea of liberty catches on, not the idea of inalienable rights catches on, and, and people decide to stand up and take arms and, and oh, we're going to... No, what happens is people get hungry. What happens is the very wealthy always screw up and eventually they can't afford to pay the food stamps, the pan and circus, because they have these people, they, uh, as a control mechanism, they have these people on food stamps, they have these people that they can't support themselves, and instead of making it so these people can support themselves, and they, they are self-sufficient, either in business or, you know, at farms and so forth, eventually they, they screw up, <laughs> happens every time, and then you have all these dependent people that are hungry, and then really bad things happen. This is not a, this is not a, uh, right? They're not talking about freedom. They're just, freedom is just another word for nothing left to lose, as I said, right? Well, I didn't say it. Bobby McGee did, I suppose. <laughs> anyway, the idea is that hard tyranny is coming. I got a video down there. But see, the nice thing is that a righteous few has always, right? It doesn't take the majority, right? The majority of Americans didn't take up arms against the British. It was a very small minority that, that, that founded this country. Most people were in the middle, just like, I want to send my kid off to go for it. George Washington didn't have a huge army, to, right? He had a ragtag army. He wasn't, well, but it turned out his guns were as good or better because the people's militia were as good or better than the guns of the, of the British. See, and that's not what we have now. Their guns are much better than our guns and they, they aim to keep it that way. So you better figure out this, right? Pen, not sword. You better educate, right? Jury box, ballot box, right? Not, not well, the ballot box is pretty much getting compromised. Everybody knows this. I mean, it's, it's, they, they, if you think that it's, <laughs> that we've got a democratic republic going on here, you're fooling yourself. Uh, they co-opted that. So what are the tools left that our founding fathers understood that have worked in other places? Well, the tools left are nullification and jury nullification, the, the, the freedom of the press. Well, we have that still to, to a great extent via the Internet. But the, other, the press, the, the, the big guys have been co-opted. So we need to inform each other via you know, social media, via videos like this. Uh, get people to understand that the crisis that comes was contrived. It's not an accident. It's not the business cycle. It's not the, the, this whole thing is a result of very bad policy, bad ideas, and failing to, when it's treason, you call it treason, and you put the guys to death. Sorry, that's the law. When it's fraud, you call it fraud, you put the guys in jail. When it's, right? No, that's not what's happening now. And the bankers are going riding roughshod. The corporations are riding roughshod. When your government is out of control and they're writing their own warrants and these agencies have no strategies of creation and they're running around with guns and badges and they have no warrants and they have no judgments and they, ha right? they have lien notices of lien that don't even have a lien with a judgment attached to it. They just have naked liens and they're taking, you know, depriving people of property and liberty, right? You, you don't just stand by, but what happens? You just stand by, right? Get, go along and get along. All my friends, none of them will buck the system. They all, right, just, ooh, that IRS, they might come and take your stuff, Ben. They might come and take your stuff. Well, no. You, 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 need, to, you, you need to concern yourself with the uh, idea of liberty and so forth before it gets out of control. And we are at the stage where it, we our government doesn't represent us. We're out of control. We're bombing other countries. They're looking to get us into war. They're looking to, you know, but the NDAA is just the beginning. And again, just look at history. Look at the stuff that happened in Germany. This is the the, the, the most outstanding example. And everybody, oh, as soon as you talk about Hitler, and Hitler, you've lost your credibility. No, just look. Take a look if you can get some translations of the things that the Germans, uh, my grandmother was a German, by the way. Uh, well, she was third generation in this country, 1849, they came here. But the idea is that, that they, you know, her parents still spoke uh, German. And I have friends that they understand that, you know, were in Germany at the time, their grandparents or parents, and they can read the German and they can see that these laws pretty much rhyme. It's not conspiracy theory. So look, because you're not reading the NDAA, you're not reading the Patriot Act, you're not reading these executive orders and comparing them to the same ones that were passed in Germany. And, and then they, they, you, you're fooled by the history books that try to tell you that these Germans were all Nazis and they're all crazy and that they all, you know, hated the Jews and they all, you know, you'll see what's going on in our country is exactly what's going, what's going on then. You can see the masses just letting, you know, drones, 
Why are we letting these people? Why are we letting Obama drone? Why why are we why are we doing this? Why are we letting these wars continue when when you sent him in the office to end these wars? But no, the military industrial complex, the bankers weren't having that. Why do we allow this thing? To, right, and it was just let out, right? around the world we are despised when we should be the light of the world, when this republic, this democratic republic, this self-government should be the example for the rest of the world. But that's exactly not what's happening. You should be ashamed. Now, the bad parents, we, we won't hold anybody to account. Well, then these people are going to keep doing what they do over and over again. Or we find them, you know, if you, if you could do the math, again, the mathematics, right? If you do the math, the, the, you understand that these, it's like stealing a car and getting fined 50 cents. You'll steal cars all day. Right? If you could, if you could, if you could rig it the system to the point where the bankers have, you just knock the zeros down and see what the fines amount to. They, 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 it amounts to stealing a car and getting fined fifty cents, or a dollar. Oh, and heck, maybe they'll get a big one, ten dollars. But you got a Mercedes. Yeah, I steal a car, and, and and if I knew that my penalty was ten bucks, why not? Well, actually, I wouldn't steal a car, but I mean, still, I mean, that's the idea. A lot of people would if the penalty is ten dollars. What's the problem? That's what the, that's where the bankers are right now. We don't hold them to account, and you guys can't do the math, so you don't understand that. Yeah, it sounds like ten million dollars. That's a lot. A billion dollar fine. That's a lot, but it's nothing. And and I can tell you, I saw a picture of all these guys working on a chain gang, right? Prison inmates. I can guarantee you, everybody in that picture combined didn't add up to what one bank has has done in a year of fraud and stealing and theft and. It's just amazing, and it goes on. Now, when things collapse, and people say, well, what to do, what do we do, no, what do we do? Well, what you do is you prepare. You prepare yourself mentally, and you prepare yourself uh, physically with having food and, you know, so because here's, again, I want to make it clear. They're trying to make it sound like if the bankers go down and the system goes down and the Federal Reserve, uh, you know, our currency, the FRN goes down, this currency that has no competition goes down, then we're all going to die and it's, it's the end of the world and it's a, it's a couple, it's going to be an apocalypse and oh my God, and the planes are going to stop and the trains will stop and there won't be any, you know, nothing will get delivered and the whole thing will come to us and civilization will fail. No, civilization will not fail. There will be pain and there will be a disruption, but we'll pick up the pieces. And the people that pick up the pieces, that, that, that minority that understands the tyranny and understands the reason for this crisis and the reason why these people will hold those guys to account because there's oh so, much money, so many more of us than there are of them. And even with, eventually they see, this is why they don't want the American populace armed. This is why they don't want you to have the force of the, the force of force on your side when it comes time. Because most of the time, what they've been doing now is, what are you gonna do about it? What are you gonna do about it? We own the we own the we own the media. We own your corporations. We own your energy sources. We own your food. We own. What are you gonna do about it? Right? Not a damn thing is what they're saying. Au contraire, <laughs> the minority prevails against the tyranny every time in history. But they try to mind fuck you into thinking that you're powerless. They try to mind fuck you into thinking that you just should go along to get along. So inform yourself. Understand, you know, who the players are. Inform your friends who the people are that need to be held to account. Inform that this is what to do. Right? Understand liberty versus tyranny. Understand that it's e pluribus unum, that it's one populace, that we are Americans, Republican or Democrat, black or white. Right? It doesn't matter, gun grabbers or not, right? Some of these gun grabbers, well, we just have to, we'll have to, you know, educate them and we'll have to protect them when the time comes because they think that the government, no, every, it happens every time. The government isn't their friend. The government, right? <laughs> live in a place where the Democrats have been in control forever. Our roads suck. <sighs> anyway, the, the point being is you protect yourself first, right? So you and your family educate yourself first. Uh, get the food supplied for yourself and your family, and then you gotta watch out because the government will try and come and take it legally with these with these you know executive orders and so forth, and the Patriot Act and the NDAA and the you know I can't remember and the, the different anachronisms for for anachronisms excuse me not anachronisms <laughs> although the laws are pretty anachronistic going back to ancient times but anyway the the, <laughs> the anachronisms that uh, make uh, up these different laws where they basically can come and take your stuff because if you prepared, you know, you were the, you were the ants and the grasshopper is out there starving, you're supposed to feed the grasshopper or whatever. 
Um, not the American way. But you'll see that most people are charitable, and most people are, if they have enough, they share with others. Because Americans are good people, again, damn it. The Americans are good people. The people I have run into across from Maine to Maui, they would be more likely to offer you their hand than to try and take your wallet. Simple. But not, but when, you know, every man for himself, eh, things get a little dicey. But the point being is, okay, so you have enough so that you can uh, survive the disruption. Make sure you have water. Make sure you have fuel. Make sure, because like I live in a place where fuel isn't necessary 100%, right? But because uh, it's always warm. But, you know, when winter comes, it's no fun, right? <laughs> Trying to, right? So make sure you have enough so that you can get through a winter, just like your grandparents used to do, just like your great-grandparents used to do. They'd have food stocked up in case they got snowed in, not because the world was ending, not because of financial collapse, but because they might not be able to get out of the house. So you got to have some food in that, right? Just common sense. What if the hurricane comes and blows the... Right? Okay, so this stuff is not hard. And then you might want to get politically active, or you might want to get involved in this experiment we call self-governance. You might want to go down and testify when they say, oh, we're going to fluoridate the water. And you, you know, just tell them about chemistry and how that works and how, you know, it's an extreme free radical and halogen that you don't want in the water. Um, maybe you go down there and, and testify when they talk about hemp. Maybe you go down there and testify when they talk about three strikes and you're out. And you send a letter and so forth that, that says this is ridiculous and the Jim Crow needs to end. Maybe you go out and inform others about the fully informed juries and, and how that works. Maybe you educate you know, just a few of your friends and family. Okay, this is how it starts. The solutions are with us, not with government, not with statism, voluntarism. Understand what that term means. Understand what statism means, because status hate to be called status. Ooh, my friend, <laughs> it's under status that think that guys with guns should come and take the guns from the guys with guns. That's statism. But that guys, right, that the government should dictate and that it's okay for them to go in and raid dairy farms. That's statism. That it's okay for the IRS to put people in jail who don't owe the tax. Because, you know, you got to have the tax because otherwise who would build the roads? Or other ridiculous, no, voluntarism. Right? Corporations that are, you know, run by the people, not the banker corporate. And see, that's another one that I try to confuse you. Like the difference between hemp and marijuana. The difference between a corporation where it's a few people trying to get together and, and uh, you know, do some good and, and benefit everyone and the shareholders and use capital and capitalism as opposed to the corporations and the corporatism that goes on with the big banks and the centralized bankers and the corporations that have sprung up around them. Anyhow, I went too long on this video, and gee, see, that's why I've cut it into two parts, because just think it would be, you know, we'd be over 30 minutes if you did it. But, you know, people always talk about solutions, talk about solutions. Well, there's some solutions. So, you know, be of good cheer. We will get through this thing. I'm telling you, read the articles that tell you every single, in, the 19, in 1920, we had a crash. At, that we, they did the right things and it only lasted a year and we came out look, and a lot of bankers went to jail and we went fun. then we had another one the depression and that's the one everybody talks about and that this one's going to be that much worse and that things are going to be well we're already in a depression we're in the we're in a depression that's almost equal to the other depression before and the depression that comes is going to be greater than that if we don't make changes and we don't have the political will to make the changes that we need to do. How are we, I mean, we need to hold these bankers to account. We need to hold our governments to account. And we won't be able to do that until the mass of people, well, actually enough of the minority, get educated that they can make, right? Because it's the 100th the monkey, right? Once you get, understand the 100th monkey theory and you understand why I'm making these videos, right? Just a keen few, right? It's a keen to set the brush fires and it all comes tumbling down. The tyrants always tremble when one man says no. Anyway, be of good cheer. We're going to get through this thing. Educate yourself. Educate others. Thank you. I can't even, I can't say it enough. Thank you for your support. And I appreciate everyone that makes comments. <laughs> even if I call you a fucker, it doesn't matter. <laughs> the idea is that, you know, discourse, right? Strenuous discourse. This is what we need. And again, e pluribus unum, guys. This is the, I think I'm going to end every single one of the, my videos from now on with e pluribus unum. All right. Thanks for your support.